Today we're going to talk about putting borders onto the out of this world solar system quilt. Let's take a look at that now. When you look at a picture of the quilt, what you notice is that all four corners are identical. We planned it that way. What you don't see is that there is a seam at the midpoint of all four sides. We have the stripe switched around. It runs one direction here and it runs the other direction here. But because of that we can create all four corners that match. This particular stripe is an asymmetrical stripe. That is, when you pick one of the stripes and go on either side of it, what is happening is not the same on each side. They are not uh, impossible to work with, but we do handle them a little bit differently than symmetrical stripes. As I showed in the picture, we're going to use the stripe from this end, but then for the other half, we are going to use it in that end. I've simply flipped it around. So yes, what happens on each side is now symmetrical. The part of the instructions that we're going to talk about now is step three. We have already added the inner red border to our quilt. So now we're going to measure the quilt through the center and mark the width and the height. We're going to take that measurement and divide it by two and then we're going to add an eighth of an inch. My quilt was 24 inches wide, so half of that is 12, plus an eighth of an inch is 12 and 1 eighth inches. The height was 32 and a half, so my half of that is 16 and a quarter, plus an eighth of an inch brings it to 16 and 3 eighths inches. My first step is to stack the four strips of planet stripe so that the stripes on the left end are aligned or stacked exactly on top of each other. So we'll do that now. I'm going to keep the selvage edges aligned and I'm going to put the first, second one on top of the first one. Then the third so that the stripes are stacked at this end. They may not be stacked on the rest of the stripe, but as long as they're stacked at the one end and perfectly aligned, then that's what I want. My next step is to trim the top left corner at a 45 degree angle. And I can either use the line on my mat or I can use the 45 degree line on my ruler to do this. All four strips have now been cut. So we've trimmed off the top left corner at a 45 degree angle, step 5. We're going to move to step 6. Select two of the strips and measure across the top edge from the miter the amount of your B. My B was 16 and 3 eighths. And we're going to place a pin in the mark, in the fabric to mark this measurement. Let's do this now. I've set one strip aside. We're now moving on to step seven. I'm going to lay the mitered end of one of my remaining strips face down to the right of the pin, my pin being here so that the stripes are aligned, as you can see. I am going to trim the bottom strip along the miter. And remove that pin for a second. I can now remove the top strip that I use simply as a guide. The balance of this strip will form the right end of my border strip. So I will take this and I will lay it face down on the other end of my strip. And you can see that the two stripes, the two sets of stripes are aligned. 
where the pin is, is my marking. And I am going to sew these two pieces together a quarter of an inch to the left of where the pin is. Let's do that now. I am going to cut right along the line where the pin is, and that will be my guide when I sew this seam. My seam will be a quarter of an inch from this edge. Don't worry that the stripes may not match up at this point. The important spot where they match up is at the mitered end. So I have my two strip halves sewn together. I'm going to open the seam and we're going to check our measurement to make sure that it measures the height less a quarter of an inch. And this is 32 and a quarter of an inch. Perfect. We're going to use the second pinned strip from step six to cut the other uh, long border. So again, I'm going to use one of my alternate strips as my angle reference. I'm going to cut and I will take the leftover part of the pin strip and I will place it against the original miter and I will trim where the pin is and sew a quarter of an inch inside that cut line to create my other side border. We'll now cut the two top and bottom borders. So I've got my two remaining strips that have the one end trimmed and I am going to measure across the top edge of my strip my A measurement which is 12 and 1 8. I'm going to use one of my side borders as my guide and align it so that the miter is to the right of the pin and I'm going to cut just like I did for the previous borders. I'm going to take my stripe and align it at the mitered end Again, I'm going to trim where the pin is and sew a quarter of an inch inside of that. And that will give me my top and bottom borders. When I add the border stripes to the quilt, I will, as I'm joining, after I've sewn the, the stripe onto the quilt and I go to sew the miters, you can see how the stripes will line up because of the way we've cut them. When I sew the mitered seam, I align the stripes and I will sew from the outer edge, lining up my stripe to the inner seam line after I've sewn the border stripes onto the quilt.